is tutorial number 43, and it covers how to create a flexible assembly within SOLIDWORKS. For this assembly, we're going to create axles and gearing. Now to start off, let's open up a brand new assembly file. Let's click File, click New, click Assembly, click OK. Now to start off, let's view the origin. So let's click View, click Origin. And now to get our parts, let's click Browse and all the parts will be found in the DS2 group 12 file. So click part 5, click open, and let's put it right on the origin. Now let's insert another component. Let's get the axles. So let's click browse, and let's get axle 40, and insert it into the assembly, and let's get axle 75. Click axle 75, click open, and insert it into the assembly also. Now, these axles aren't circular, but we're still able to make them concentric into these circles using the temporary axis. So let's click Mate, click the circle, the middle circle, and let's click the smaller axles, temporary axis, and we're going to create a concentric mate. Click OK. And now, as you can see, if we try to move it, it's concentric in the middle circle and it's free to move. Now let's do the same for the larger axle onto the outer circle. So let's click the temporary axis of axle 75 and let's click the outside circle and we're going to make another concentric mate. Click OK, click OK and we've done the same to this axle. Now let's insert the gears. So let's click isometric view, click insert component, click browse click 26P, 3P, click open, click inside the assembly, click insert component, click browse, and let's get 27A, 3P, click open, click OK. Now we're going to get these gears to go onto these two axles, so let's get the smaller gear onto the smaller axle, so let's click the temporary axis of the smaller gear, click mate, and let's click the temporary axis of the smaller axle. Click OK. And now both the axle and the gear are in line. But when you turn the gear, the axle doesn't move. So we have to make them relate to each other. So let's click a flat face on the axle and a flat face on the gear. And we're going to make coincident mates. Click OK. And now when we turn the gear, the axle moves with it. So both move together. Click OK. Now let's do the same for the larger gear. Let's click the temporary axis, click Mate, and click the temporary axis on the larger axle. Click OK. Now click and hold on the larger uh, gear and pull it out. Now let's click a flat surface on the axle and a flat surface on the gear. Click OK. And now they move together also. Now let's mate this face of the gear to this part. Click OK. And the same with the smaller gear. Click OK. Click OK. Now you can see both gears move, but they're moving independently. We want them to move each other. So let's say that we have a motor moving the smaller gear, so we want to see the bigger gear move after. So to do this, we have to click Mate, click Advanced Mates, and we can click the Gear Mate. So let's click that. Now for the Gear Mate, we need to click an edge on each gear. So let's click this edge here and this edge here. Now what we have to do is create a ratio between the two. Now let's say that it's a 3 to 1, so let's click make this 3 and we'll make that 1. So by this you can see that it is a 3 to 1 gearing ratio. So click OK, click the front view, and now they move together.
Now, within SolidWorks, my computer is not fast enough to calculate all the gearing ratios. That's why it's stuttering a bit. And what I found, which is easier, it doesn't make a correct gearing ratio exactly, but you're able to create a more smoothing gear is by deleting that last mate that we created, the gear mate. Right click it and click delete, click yes. And we'll make a planar mate between these two. So let's click mate, open up the tree, open up one gear, click the top plane, open up the other gear and click their top plane, click parallel, click accept, click OK. And now these two gears move in a one to one ratio, but it's much smoother than using the gear, the advanced gear mating way. Now it isn't 100% correct, but it helps move all the gears much more smoothly than using the gear mate within the SolidWorks. If your computer is faster, it'll work fine. Mine's not fast enough to do it, so that's why I use the plane sometimes. Now let's add another gear to the output shaft. Let's click Insert Component, click Browse, and let's put 27A3P in again. Click Open insert it into the assembly, click the temporary axis, click mate, click the temporary axis on the large gear shaft, click OK, pull it out, and let's click one flat face and another flat face, click OK, and let's click this face and this face, click OK, and now as we move this gear, which we can say is hooked up to a motor, we're moving both of those gears to an output shaft, which we could say that this is a tire or wheel that it's moving. Click front view, and let's look at it at the front. And as we move it, they're both moving. Now again, this is using just the parallel axes. We can use the gear mate if we wanted to, just, I know with my computer, it's not fast enough to actually make it nice and smooth. So I just use the parallel mates as a quick fix. But to be exact, you should be using, through the advanced mate, the gear mate. And that concludes our tutorial on flexible assemblies within SolidWorks.